Hello everyone, this is the Parks Academy where we discuss and celebrate all things theme parks related. We focus mainly on Disney parks and resorts in both Anaheim and Orlando. My name is Paige. My name is Steven. And today we will be continuing our Park Icons mini-series. Yes, we are. The, you are taking the reins on this one. I'm taking over. And um, you are, you're grabbing this episode by the root, if you will. <laughs> Just really getting in on the information for uh, the Tree of Life. <laughs> there we go. Yep. Perfect. My favorite. That sucked. I'm sorry. That was bad. <laughs> I'm so stupid. I'm sorry. <laughs> I apologize. That's okay. All right. It was punny. Um, yeah, I think that'll be fun. Um, I uh, Since I've done the last three, and then you're doing this one, and, and we have one more that I'm doing, and then you're closing us out with Cinderella's uh, Beautiful Castle. We're not doing, like, out of the country stuff. We're just doing, like, the six parks. Um, I'm looking forward to hearing what you have to bring to the table about this big, big tree. I do have a decent amount of information to bring That's cool. to your attention. I feel like you will probably learn a handful of things today. Have you? Do you feel like you've learned a lot about like the other stuff that I've shared, or is it I just have. kind of you have? Yeah. It's not like yeah. That's cool. I'm glad about that. Um, okay, great. Well, uh, what do you have going on this week that you're excited about? What I'm excited about is we are visiting California this week. Unfortunately, not to go to Disneyland. Not to go to Disneyland. You're right. We have a family event. Yes. Um, which is great. I mean, no no shade. It's just, yes, we're I, very I wish, excited about that. I wish that we were um, going to be in Anaheim, but, but instead- We are not. We will not be in Anaheim. However, the thing I'm looking forward to is we are going to our favorite authentic tiki bar. Right. It is called Wilfred's. Mm-hmm. We are so excited. Mm -hmm. We have our tiki mugs packed and ready to go. We have our Hawaiian shirts packed and ready to go. Yeah. I went through like all my Roosevelt shirts and my Tommy Bahama Mickey Mouse shirt trying to figure out which one I should bring. Yep. I packed my Mickey Mouse Tommy Bahama, but I might bring a Roosevelt's just in case the moon strikes. Just in case we go twice. You never. You never. Twice? Yeah. It's expensive there. So we'll see, man. That could be a whole Disney trip. (laughs) You know? So I'm excited for Wilfred's. I already wrote to them on Instagram and told them we were coming and they're excited to see us. That's cool. Yep. I'm into that. What are you excited about? Um, On sort of like a similar vein of like food related, um, this is going to sound really basic and cliche, but um, I'm actually really looking forward to eating In-N-Out Burger for the first time in a year. Um. Uh, since I grew up in California, I actually worked at in and out in college, in high school and early college for four or five years. I was there, um, worked my way up, but I ate there all the time. I loved it. And, um, it's actually one thing that I really miss about living out there. Um, and uh, I'm looking forward to eating there on right after we land. That'll be really nice to just drive over and hit that up and eat That'll and be then great. go, uh, go to our final destination. I'm also looking forward to this trip because our trip last year, I got COVID on day two. That was rough. Quarantined the entire trip. That was tough. Then flew home and then you and our daughter got COVID. Mm -hmm. So then we were quarantined for another week. I felt really guilty on that trip because we had a bunch of stuff planned out and we canceled a lot of it. But I was like, I already have tickets to the Giants game and I don't want to miss this. So I ended up going with my dad, and and you stayed back, unfortunately, mm-hmm. with our daughter and my mom. Um, but we were hopefully we're all going this 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 time around, and hopefully uh, no one's going to get sick. Yeah, especially me, because I'll go either way. But I there you go. I would stink if I got sick. Yes, because I was like stink. the one who put all this together. So. I know, I know. Um, speaking of tiki mugs, we're also going on the day that the tiki mugs are being given away. So I'm really excited about that. Yes. Ooh, I just gave away our obsec that. No, it doesn't matter. Say hi if you see me, I guess. That's I okay. Yeah, say hi. <laughs> um, cool. Uh, I just wanted to quickly say, uh, before we jump into this episode, thanks to our sponsor, Deep Cut. Um, you can get 10% off their website with TPA10 at checkout of your first order for their record accessories and accoutrements. Um, and also, um, just quick front matter on the show, um, you know, we, we really would appreciate it if you guys would hit us up with a kind review on Apple Podcast. Anything helps. Uh, yeah, it would be great. Um, Paige, you want to get started? You ready? All right, let's do it. All 
right. So today we are talking about none other than the Tree of Life in Disney's Animal Kingdom. You probably know this if you're a Disney person, um, but the Tree of Life opened on April 22nd, 1998, the day that Animal Kingdom opened, which was also Earth Day. Not a coincidence there. The Tree of Life is 145 feet tall and 165 feet wide, which if you recall the information you taught me last week, Mm -hmm. it has the same diameter as Spaceship Earth. Correct. When you said 165 feet wide Mm -hmm. um, diameter last Mm -hmm. week, I was like, what? That's the exact same diameter as Tree of Life. Can I just intervene just for two seconds, go off the rails? Sure. My dad just texted me and he picked up a Mickey Mouse Hawaiian t-shirt or a button-up shirt at Kohl's. What are the odds? It's so funny. And we were I, literally I wrote talking back, about that two minutes ago. I wrote him back and I just said, for me, question mark, because he said new shirt from Kohl's. It's actually really great. It's got Mickey on there lounging. With that is awesome. Well, if it's not for you, you should definitely get a matching shirt to your I might dad. Need to, that'd be embarrassing. We'll see. Anyways. You don't have to wear it on the same day. I know, but we probably would. You know? That is awesome. Okay. So anyway. same diameter as Spaceship Earth. Yes. But I mean, that doesn't surprise me because this is a big old boy. Right. So here's the interesting thing, though, that you might not have realized. The roots, like the base of the tree is only 50 feet wide. The entire canopy is what makes it 165 feet in right, diameter. of course. And it's only 145 feet tall, which still feels really massive, but that makes it the shortest Mm -hmm. icon in Walt Disney World. Right. Because it's definitely not the shortest icon out of the six that we're covering. But that that makes totals. That tracks to be completely that it's the shortest there. Because I mean, force perspective wise, it definitely looks big. But then when you kind of look at it, you're like, oh, that's actually not as big. Like, I I believe you that the roots, like the base of it's not as big because I've seen pictures of it being constructed and it's actually fairly modest in that regard. So let's talk a little bit about the construction, shall we? It is a massive artificial tree located on Discovery Island, which is right in the center as you're entering through the oasis of Disney's Animal Kingdom. It took several artists, sculptors, and Imagineers roughly 18 months to create it, um, and the building process took about a year. So it was actually made from an upside-down oil rig Mm -hmm. coated in concrete and then based on a baobab tree so that it could withstand Florida hurricanes. So, hey, they're recycling yeah, using great. old mm-hmm. oil rig. The reason they did that was they then coated it with a sort of like a, a second layer of steel wiring mm-hmm. and then the concrete to kind of solidify that Yeah, because they had to say basically like if we have a hurricane rip through here, this mm-hmm. thing's not going anywhere. It's got to stay put, yep. right? That's interesting. I posted some pictures this week about like just kind of teasing what we're going to be talking about. And it had a couple different variations of like the beginning and then some of the metal piping coming out of it and stuff. Yeah. So that's, and I didn't know it was an upside down oil rig. That's yes. Really so when you're looking at those really early construction photos mm-hmm. or videos, those massive red piping, there's mm-hmm. six of them. Yeah. That is the part that is the oil rig. Um, and then they solidified it with an extra layer of steel and then the concrete around it. Um, It also has more than 8,000 branches and more than 102,000 leaves that are made of kynar. That's a type of thermoplastic. Okay. So we learned a lot about plastics and and other materials last week with Spaceship Earth. This, these leaves were all also made with a type of thermoplastic and they were painted with five different shades of green. They do actually blow in the wind because of the material, and they were all placed by hand, made by hand, and they're about a foot long each. Um, 102,000 of those bad boys. I just have to say that Joe Rody outdid himself on this one. I could not. You know? I could not respect an Imagineer more than yeah. I respect Joe Rody. It's really something to look at. Yeah, it's cool. I know. It's really, really cool. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, and all hand. I mean, I believe that they were all hand put on because, like, you yes. can't just throw them. I mean, you can't just like use a machine to attach one hundred and two thousand right. leaves properly, or just like throw them in the air and hope that they stick. Right. Yep. yep. That's nothing. I don't know why I said that. That's <laughs> literally nothing. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> so, do you want to know what they base this tree off of? So you said, I've always thought it was boabab, but you said boab. Baobab. Baobab. 
Oh, like a bow bun, bow bab. Sure. Okay. If I, that I, helps you. For some it. reason, I always thought bow bab in my head. Um, Our daughter has a children's book called The Baobab Tree. It's really cute. It's it about cute. like the history of the mythology yeah. surrounding baobab trees and how it was like a really sassy what tree I... that had too much attitude. So the gods flipped it upside down so that its yeah. mouth was underground know, so it he couldn't was just sass like, them anymore. He was just like a total butthead to everyone that he spoke to. And, and he was like, ungrateful. They were like, God, this guy. And then they just They just got flipped rid of him, him upside down. Um, I I've always felt like because of the name, it was very like it was sort of um, a tree of life, Rafiki's home inspired. Yes. Is that like kind of on the, yes. on the right path? Yep. That's what I thought. You are correct. Yeah. So there's a couple things. One, taking it back like a half step, the Imagineers had this idea for the Baobab tree and the tree of life, but they were like, we want to make sure this looks right. What exactly should this tree look like? So where did they go? They went to none other than Epcot to the Flower and Garden Festival. Okay. And they went to Japan mm -hmm. and they found bonsai trees. Okay. And found one particular bonsai tree that they mm -hmm. said, that's the exact look we want to go for. I wonder if their travels to Epcot were paid by the company. Yes, I you know, imagine. You know, if they had to like expense it themselves. I imagine the shuttle or the bus <laughs> yeah. was pretty pricey for them. So bonsai trees, that's cool. Yeah, so that's I guess it kind of has that look a little bit, huh? Yes, yeah, so once you look at it, you can kind of see that that style definitely inspired it. Yeah. Um, But it is known for being a based on a baobab tree in terms of like the overall construction. And yeah, design. and what I like about that too is that there's um, baobab trees in the Kilimanjaro safaris. Yes. And so they're all Except over the place. those are there. really in there. I know, those are fake spoilers. I know, I know. Yeah. That's crazy. It's crazy to me how much mm -hmm. stuff is Disney magic and it looks real. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Okay. So where this origin comes from, you are spot on with the Rafiki's Tree of Life. Mm -hmm. Now, there are several Tree of Life concepts that are mentioned in various mythologies and religions as well. Um, this particular one is based on Rafiki's ancient tree, and it features around 325 different animal carvings on its trunk and its roots. So I thought that you were going to ask me how many animals there were as like a trivia question. I actually didn't do any trivia questions because I felt but... like that took away from the facts. There, I don't sure. have a ton of facts and figures. Um, I just thought you were going to ask me that. And I knew it was over 300. So I was excited because I knew it relatively. I have, yeah. an, I have an approximate knowledge of many things. Yes. And I thought that it was, anyways, doesn't matter. Well, I knew it was over Nicely done. So. If you look at different sources, it'll give you a different number. Like, mm -hmm. I think on Disney's actual website, it says more than 300. It would be, I feel like it would be very, very, very difficult to count. Yes. You could do it, but you would lose track. You'd have to, like, have a whole Excel spreadsheet. Well, I think there's not a solid list that is 100% accurate anywhere. Mm -hmm. Like every source that I looked at was like 320, 325, yeah. 300. And there was a different list of animals. Challenge. Next time we go. Try to figure out all the animals. Yeah. Put them in alphabetical order. I'm sure you can get like a 3D rendering of it and kind of probably figure it out. Yeah. Up. That'd be cool. That'd be cool. So when we're talking about the construction of all of those 325 different animal carvings, some of the medium sized animals took about one whole day to carve. And some of the larger ones took either multiple days or multiple sculptors or both. That still seems like not a lot of time. That's fast. Yeah, but 325, you're looking at a year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's with, true. And some of the carvings are massive. Yeah, right, right, right. Some of them are kind of small, but even like the ant is still, it's not ant size. Everything is larger on the Tree of Life. So, Okay. Here is where I get to go into real Disney lore like you have gotten the pleasure of doing the last few episodes. So this was the actual myth written by Imagineers for opening day. Are you ready? Yes. One day, our vegetation would grow on Discovery Island. There were trees, shrubs, flowers, and birds. It was a barren piece of land. Then a tiny ant planted a seed and made a wish. He asked for a tree to grow, a tree large enough to provide shelter for all the animals. Magically, the ant's wish came true and a tree did begin to grow. And it kept growing until there was room beneath the limbs for all of the animals from A to Z. 
As the tree continued to reach for the heavens, the images of all the animal alphabet that took shelter beneath its shade appeared on its trunk, roots, and branches. Thanks, little ant. That's interesting. It made a wish. Mischievous little guy, huh? It made a wish because it just wanted all of the animals to be safe under its canopy. I feel like I would like to start making wishes when I plant seeds. There you go. You should. You should have a little ceremony. So here's some fun facts about this lore for you. The lore continues with the fact that the tree is known as the source of water and life for all of the animals within the tree and then also the village, quote unquote, that sprung up around it. So that's right. what that the oasis is for. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All of the buildings as you're walking through mm-hmm. the entrance. Um, and the original ant is said to be able to be spotted through a knot hole hidden along the pass around the tree. Is I there any like are there any photos of that? Couldn't find a picture Anything? of that. So we will have to see if we can try to find it or check next time. Um, and do you happen to know where the hidden Mickey is on the tree of life? Yeah, he's on the trunk. Good one. Do you know where in relation to another animal? No cheating. Um, I'm not cheating. I'm just looking it up. Um, I don't actually know where he is. Uh, there is a hidden Mickey upside down above the hippo's eye. So next time you go, find the hippo. He's pretty massive. Oh, it's like a dark spot. It's like a birthmark. And look above the hippo. Yeah, it's like a birthmark on the um, hippopotamus. Look above the hippopotamus's I eye. I see it. Yeah, that's interesting. And okay. you will find a an upside down hidden Mickey. It's kind of abstract, huh? It is. Interesting. That's cool. I'm so into that. my favorite fact about the animals that can be found on the tree of life is, you know, Joe Rody and the Imagineers invited our good friend Jane Goodall. I wish she was my good friend. She is one right. of my heroes. From the time I was a little girl, I wanted to work in conservation and work on a wildlife refuge. And Jane Goodall was just like the epitome of what I wanted to be when I grow up. And so they invited her before the park opened and she was looking for the chimp on the tree. And so she asked where it was mm-hmm. and they were like, uh, no Oops, chimp. Easy. Whoops. So oh, she basically insisted, not like in a forceful way, but was mm-hmm. like, hey, you should totally add a chimp because yeah. that would be super awesome. And yeah, well, they're an important part of our it, yes. world. Exactly. And the whole idea of conservation and Mm -hmm. if they value Jane Goodall this much, like they should be honoring that part of what she's studied because Mm -hmm. she. I mean, they have a a scorpion on the darn thing. Yes, there are animals. Most letters of the alphabet, I think there were like three or four letters that I went through and couldn't find. Uh, But so they did add a chimpanzee. To the tree of life, they added. Wouldn't you know it? They added David Graybeard. I was going to ask if it was Mr. Graybeard. Yes. That's funny. So we have a we have a children's book about who Jane Goodall is for our daughter. And we like to read that one with her. And it does talk about some of the chimps that she observed in the wild. And David Graybeard is the most famous because he was mm-hmm. the first chimp that she ever observed making a tool in the wild. Mm-hmm. And if you don't know much about Jane Goodall, she is basically... The best female scientist ever to have existed. She went by herself and mm-hmm. lived in the jungle to immerse herself in um, living among chimpanzees and studying them because humans didn't really know much about them or um, how they interacted with each other or how they interacted with the world around them. So almost all of the research that we know about chimps and their development and their intelligence comes from Jane Goodall's research. Yeah. There's so, a really good documentary about her called Jane Goodall, The Hope, that came out in 2020. Yes, that it's I'm so good. a fan of. And then Jane in 2017 is also a pretty good one, too. But we've, we've, so yeah, we've definitely kind of dived into her life quite a yes. bit. And uh, interesting character, Jane Goodall. Yeah, she's awesome. Fascinating lady. So they did, of course, make a David Graybeard, um, and they carved it onto the Tree of Life. You will actually find him right before you enter the turnstiles to the attraction, which I'm going to talk about in just a minute. 
um, within the tree, and there's a Jane Goodall plaque right next to the David Gray Okay, good. So good, good. if you oh, notice- Oh, I see that. Yeah, I just looked it up. That's yeah, cool. Yeah, if you notice, he is one of the most intricately designed and detailed, mm-hmm. um, not just because he was an afterthought and they added him in, but you can almost see like the sort of different color variation um, so that they could really recognize that he was David Graybeard. And he's a lot more detailed, I think, and a lot bigger. He really stands out That's right cool. there. By oh, he's the huge. Yeah, he's the, huge. By the entrance yeah. of the attraction. Wow. So. He's, I, I see a picture of him compared to an adult man. I know. Um, and he's he's pretty giant. That's I very know. cool. Isn't that awesome? That is very, very cool. Yes. So let's talk a little bit about the attraction. Um, so inside of the Tree of Life is It's Tough to Be a Bug. This is a 428-seat arena that is a 3D attraction based on the Pixar film A Bug's Life. And before they solidified that choice, they had considered a couple of different things to put under or inside the tree. One of them would have been an upscale restaurant at the base of the tree, which would have been called, like, Roots or something. That's... Yep. That's, That's no good. Well, they wanted that to be like the premier mm-hmm. dining location. Yeah. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. you enter the park. And, and there is like, like no premier dining in Animal Kingdom. Really. Not really. There's not. I mean, it's there's just it's not. not. I, I would say like Tusker House. Is, it's not premier dining. It's That's not, like but it's probably dining. like the nicest one mm-hmm. in my opinion. Yeah. It, it is. And that's saying something because right. you don't have like a, you know cinderella's royal table or Correct. anything like really you know of course a, you know outstanding right. in service or anything right um the other options they had considered were access to the top of the tree for guests to be able to either climb up if the tree had been shorter so they had originally thrown out the idea that the tree would be like 50 feet tall mm-hmm. and people would be able to climb up to the like top that idea. or to have some sort of elevator system within mm-hmm. it since they had this concrete mm-hmm. um, and oil rig system. It was wide enough inside that they would have been able to yeah. fit an elevator shaft for mm-hmm. people to be able to ride up to the top and yeah. to view the entire park from up there. That would there. have been pretty choice. It would have been cool. However, I think It's Tough to Be a Bug was a really good option. Yeah, and um, of course It's Tough to Be a Bug was um, secondarily brought into DCA with a bug's land. Oh, which we should totally I'm going to talk about that. We should totally talk about defunct lands. Yes, we should. That's but a great idea. I won't idea get into it. I just think it's cool that, I mean, I, I like that it's there because it's no longer in yes. California, of course. So don't You're like you wagging worry. your finger at me. Don't so I'm gonna you shut worry up over there. We will talking. talk about that. Yeah. Um, a couple more things about the tree itself and the origins and the, the walkways roots. and everything. The roots of the tree of life. So in 2015, they actually did expand the roots to make wider walkways for people. So that was a more recent um, adaptation. You can take the Discovery Island trails around the tree to get a close-up view of the carvings. And one thing we've talked extensively about with Animal Kingdom is how this park is so much more relaxing. It can be so much more relaxing because there are so many different paths and walkways you can go on where there's like hardly any people. Right, right. Like we've been on different paths um, and walkways where we didn't see anybody almost the entire time we were on that trail. Right. It's just so cool. You can just kind of like drift off and feel like you're by yourself. So check out those Discovery Island trails around the tree and you can look at all of the different carvings on the different routes and things. Yeah. I mean, I would say that that there are certain areas that I, I'm a huge fan of on Discovery Island and, and being able to like, you know, if you're exiting, it's tough to be a bug or if you're just like, walking around the area and you happen to go down into you know near the trunk and stuff it's it's really nice um it's cool it's relaxing Mm -hmm. unfortunately when we were there last time there was someone getting like a professional photo shoot done it was one of those private tours that where you get um professional photos so not just a photo pass person right so we were like being stopped you know you need to wait till they're done and uh, there was like Mm -hmm. kids running away from the camera and i was just thinking guys it's it's good. I'm glad you paid for this experience, yes. but also just like let us through or let us yep. be in your pictures. Right. You know. Yep. Yep. But I love I love that area. It's I it's know, probably it's so nice. I would say besides Asia, that's one of my favorite parts of Animal Kingdom. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, also, you can find around the base of the tree several live animals, such as lemurs, kangaroos, flamingos, tortoises. So they do have some live animals on uh, close to yeah. the Discovery Island. There, mm-hmm. you don't just have to be deep within the park. 
um, to right. be able to see live animals. So that experience sort of starts right away. Mm -hmm. And then the last thing I have for the um, history of the tree itself and just talking about like the construction and the thought behind it is I have a couple quotes from Joe Rohde. Would you like to hear them? Hit me with them, please. Okay. By all means. So, you know, he's very much of a creative artistic mind and mm -hmm. the way that he speaks is so eloquent about all of these things because it's so like you can tell he's thinking so intricately right. about everything he does. Mm -hmm. So he says, since nature is everywhere anyway, we also need to signify that this place is exceptional, in some way magical. Thus, a strange tree. A tree whose body disappears under patient observation to become nothing but animals. It's a metaphor for the rewards nature can provide to the careful observer. But since we all know it has been made, it is a work of art. It also signifies the intent to communicate, to tell a story. In fact, the tree promises two things. One, this place is a story place about animals. Two, this place is a designed place full of virtuoso accomplishments. That almost sounds like a prayer. And it kind of reads like one, huh? He's so That's intelligent nice. and nice. thoughtful. Yeah. That's nice. Everything he built turned to gold. Yeah. That's good. Joe Rohde. Man. Miss well, cool. him as an imagineer. Yeah. All right. So that was most of the history about the construction and the tree. The story, all that. Yeah, it's good. I would that's love good. to talk to you about some of the alternative plans for the entrance to Animal Kingdom because yeah, I please. do feel By like this would have heavily impacted mm -hmm. what the Tree of Life yeah, was. of course. And it could have completely changed what the icon of the park was. Okay. I don't think you're expecting this one. You gave me a couple of hints, and so I have one thought, but I know that my one thought is completely incorrect. So the alternative plan for the entrance was Genesis Gardens instead of the Oasis. Okay. So I have a lot of background about this because I think people would have had questions. Guests would begin by entering through Noah's Ark to enter Genesis Gardens, which would have had several animals there when you walk in. The idea was to share how Noah saved animals and that it's still important to save animals today. So it okay. would tie in that conservation message. Mm -hmm. Now, the ark would have been massive enough to have oh. several hundred people walking through at once. So wait, you're telling me that like they were going to have the ark experience that's in Kentucky, but in like Disney, Disney World? Yes, as what? the entrance to Animal Kingdom. Okay, wait. That's so funny. Just wait for it. They wanted to make sure it was big enough to block the gardens behind it so that once you got through the other side of the arc, you would still have that wow factor as soon as you enter Genesis Gardens. And it would not be full of animals. It would just be like a lush, untouched garden signifying the Garden of Eden and how it was like this completely overgrown, like full of fruits and plants and flowers. And that was going to be the entrance to Animal Kingdom instead of the Oasis, where it's just like, here are shops. Oh. Now you see the tree. Boy. Yeah. That would have been... Um, Want to know why they didn't do it? Well, I have a couple of thoughts, but... Um, what are your thoughts? Um, <laughs> well, my first thought is that it's kind of weird to add religion to a theme park a little bit that's like Disney, you know? Sure. Um, that's kind of, and I feel like that could be an interesting, I don't know. It just seems like it would be a little bit counter to like Disney being for like everyone just because some, you know, sure. people have different beliefs and That whatever. is basically why they didn't. Yeah. Like that just really would surprise me to have it yeah. be like, you know, this is like a biblical story and mm -hmm. then, you know, everyone has to walk through it and experience it. And if it's like, well, you know, I may not be from that particular walk of life. Sure. So that would be my thinking. You know, because that could be very complicated. Yeah. And remember, Disney is all about making money, which we will talk about in our next episode. Yes, I'm um, sure. They're about making money, not about uh, having people be on the right side of things. Right. No right. matter what it is. It's exactly. all about the almighty dollar for them. Yep. So remember, this is 1999. I feel like things were not as divided as they are now. However, they decided not to go through with it because... 
Walt Disney World in Florida is very much of a world traveler tourist destination. Exactly, right, exactly. If we were talking about Disneyland, I think they would mm-hmm. do something to cater to the people of California. Like, I think they would mm-hmm. do that. But we're talking about people from all over the world mm-hmm. traveling thousands of miles to come see Walt Disney World. Right, so their right. thought was... They didn't want religious beliefs or differences mm-hmm. from people to keep them from experiencing all that right. Animal Kingdom had to offer. Right, For right, example, right, right. if someone from the Middle East was coming and yeah. they were Muslim or mm-hmm. um, even someone who's Jewish who mm-hmm. may have just like subtle yeah. differences in their mm-hmm. theology, they didn't want them to be like, I'm not walking through an ark right. to find out what's on the other side. Mm-hmm. So Disney was like, Let's just scrap that. We can still do a lot with this. Yeah. The tree of life itself, remember, like, if you have any background or understanding of Christianity, there's also sort of like a tie into the tree of life in the sure. Bible. Sure. So people that do believe that can mm-hmm. kind of see that and yeah. feel like there's a resemblance there. Yeah. But there's also in different mythologies and religions their beliefs about the tree of life it's right. in several different religious and cultural right backgrounds right. you don't so, like pinhole your audience right so everybody can walk you know? in and see this tree and be like wow you yeah, know that great. reminds me of the garden of eden or wow that reminds me of this um ancient chinese mythological yeah, concept oil like that's crazy you know my uncle worked on yeah or like look conservation yeah, they exactly, recycled an right. oil rig david graybeard that's yeah that's right. fascinating i yeah. i think they I, I they went with the right direction on that one um i've just never really heard of <clears throat> any forms of religion being added into the parks ever yeah, like all of my years. I know. So uh, that just threw me off guard a little bit. I was yeah. Not you can actually that. find a lot of pictures and mock-ups because it was it hmm. was in a in the talks for a while, and Fascinating. it was sort of a an interesting thing that I was surprised when I started doing this research. I was like, I, I huh. never in my life would have even considered that Disney would have done like a Noah's Ark yeah. experience. But just you, you wait until you hear about the, the history of uh, Sleeping Beauty's castle. Oh, I can't wait. I'm just kidding. Has, I can't it's not, wait. It has nothing to do with anything like that. <laughs> That'd be wild, though. Of the other alternative entrance ideas that they had kind of thrown out there were um, having a ton of dinosaurs right at the entrance or to have more caged animals at the entrance, Boo. like so that it felt more like a zoo as soon as you yeah. walked in. Yeah. Now that's both too, of those, like both of those, got a nose. big thumbs down because yeah. the dinosaur ones right away takes away from the overall feeling of mm-hmm. the current feeling of like the conservation aspect because like right. we, we we didn't conserve dinosaurs, guys. Well, there like, is a dinosaur sculpted on the Tree of Life, and I'm like, that's great, but like, but yeah. also remember. Um, Beastly Kingdom was supposed to be a part of Disney's right, Animal Kingdom. Right, right, right. That was and, a huge defunct land that right. never came around. So, like, there's isn't there a dragon in the original logo? There is, yeah. And I think in some areas you can still see it. Now, of course, that kind of fits with the world of Pandora. Sure. Um, but, yeah, there was supposed now to be... Now it finally makes sense. Yeah, there were, like, there were actually, even after opening, there were some, like, dragons and things like that that within the water. Um, there were plans for, like, a... a um, a, a roller coaster where you were like ch- running away from dragons and stuff like yeah. that. That was supposed to be like an indoor coaster kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of interesting stuff that I, I do feel like we could cover at some point. Right. But yeah, Beastly Kingdom was was going to be a big part of that. Yeah. Um, off the top of my head, I can't remember why they really scrapped it, but it, that would be an interesting show. I feel like they ran out of money or something. Something happened. I can't remember with or it. space I, I, that they were. Yeah, that they didn't like budget their space well enough for mm-hmm. their original plan. So yeah. we know that there's also talks of in the next, you know, five to ten years of expanding Animal right. Kingdom. To do but a that's little, a, like Zootopia and Moana. That's a and completely stuff, which, different episode. Boy, do I have thoughts about that. But um, yeah. maybe we can do like an episode about you know upcoming ideas and, and yeah. flush those out. But um, Absolutely. in the meantime, yeah, no, you you are right about that. But I, I think that I think that having dinosaurs in the intro would have been kind of weird, not fitting. Right. And also, uh, I think that having animals, you, you saying animals in cages, I know yes. it would be a lot more quaint than that. Sure. And, and, and like a zoo. Nicer. Well, even so, zoos are kind of depressing. But Well, so that um, was the problem that yeah. they were like, this kind of goes against the whole conservation well, idea of the also, animals living in their natural habitat. Right. And also, like, if you're going to go see that, you might as well just go to, like, why pay the, the premium ticket to go to Disney World? 
if you can just go to right. a zoo and see the same thing. Like you Which, can't see Kilimanjaro Safari at a zoo or almost anywhere else unless you go to Africa. I know. Um, so that's one of the yeah you have to you have to create scarcity and like a, a product that no one else is selling and that's yes. yeah, that's what they did. I so. have two things about that. One, I was listening to a podcast last week and the woman has three children. She took she and her husband took her kids to Disney World. They skipped Animal Kingdom and her reasoning was something along the lines of like we have a really great zoo by our house so we didn't yeah. feel like we needed to go and i'm like mm -hmm. who told you it was a zoo it's yeah, so much it's more definitely than not a, zoo. a zoo i mean if you go over to like rafiki's planet watch you're in you're in zoo territory a little yeah, bit but even so it's all about conservation right. and like yeah. the emphasis on that there's so much mm -hmm. to offer for right, kids right. there's so many really wonderful rides and things to mm -hmm. see it's I just yeah. I wish people would see it as more than a zoo. Yeah, it is more than a zoo. And I think that adding in Pandora was was definitely a big hit because it is something that you don't see everywhere anywhere yes. else at all. It's a fantastic choice. So the other thing I wanted to say, because you were just talking about the Kilimanjaro Safari, is I have mm -hmm. a friend at work from South Africa mm -hmm. and she actually said to me that she had taken her kids to Walt Disney World when they mm -hmm. were little. And she said that the Kilimanjaro Safari does it right. Yep. She said it feels very authentic. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's still a Disney ride, yeah. so it's not it's not the exact same experience, of course. But right. she said it felt very authentic to her mm -hmm. um, for someone who has actually done real safaris Dang. in Africa. Humble she brag. was she was praising the yeah. Kilimanjaro yeah. safari. That's good. So. No, that's good stuff. Yeah. I love that. Yep. All right. The two things I have left about the Tree of Life. I do want to dive a little bit more into it's tough to be a bug. Yeah, please. Just because that is the main attraction within the tree. Mm -hmm. So it is an eight minute 3D movie and multimedia show. You wear bug eyeglasses mm -hmm. because you are basically being transformed into a bug to see what it's like. To one be... of the scariest experiences you'll ever have. Well, you want to see what it's like oh and gosh. how bugs feel because they're yeah. just getting squashed all the time yeah. and people hate them. <laughs> And so Flick is the host, along with Hopper when he crashes the party a few times. Um, there's smells and sounds and sights and bugs crawling under your butt or bugs stinging you in the back. And it is based on the 1998 movie A Bug's Life. Mm -hmm. um, the theme song was written by George Wilkins and guess who else? Oh, boy. Someone that you thought was dead two weeks ago. Oh, um, Kevin... Um, Kevin Rafferty. Kevin Rafferty. Yeah. Yep. I thought that was interesting just because we accidentally thought he was dead. Do you want to hear a funny fact? It was really a different quick? Kevin Rafferty. So, yes. Um. So, the voice of Hopper in the movies is Kevin Spacey. It's since been replaced. Well, I was going to say, but it's just fitting because he kind of turned out to be a real life villain. Yeah. You know? So, they replaced so, his voice after all that nonsense went yeah. down. I don't remember who took mm -hmm. his place. I just thought, it's I just think it's kind head. of a, a funny, funny yes, thing. That that's I know. what ended up happening. I know. Um, yeah, I specifically saw that because I was, of course, looking mm -hmm. at the cast of all of the voices from the show. Gosh, and it's all the same good, people from the good, movie. Good, good cast. Dave Foley as Flick. Like, what a treat that cast is. Yeah, it's all the same voice actors from the movie. And then they replaced Kevin Spacey's voice after all the problematic things after came out. He turned out he was a terrible person. Yes, yes. So... This was actually, did you know, the very first Pixar attraction to open in a Disney park? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I would know that because the first like real Toy Story attraction was Toy Story Mania. And yeah. we know that, you know, that didn't come out till later on. So, right. yes, I, that makes perfect sense to yes. me. Yes. Um, it was also, as Stephen alluded to earlier, in Disney's California Adventure from 2001 to 2018. It was an opening day attraction in Disney's Animal Kingdom. Do you know that the attraction actually beat the movie by seven months? I did not know that, but I wanted to quickly retract a statement. Okay. I said that Toy Story Mania was the first um, Toy Story ride, but Buzz Lightyear uh, mm, was actually yes. the first one. Um, it opened up, at least in Disneyland, it opened up in 2005. Uh, and, Toy Story Mania and no uh, Buzz Lightyear oh, Buzz and Toy Lightyear. Story Mania didn't open up in Hollywood Studios until 2008 got it got it I just wanted to quickly okay. like, yeah. you know, make sure that was yeah I think Buzz Lightyear in Magic Kingdom is definitely pretty old because I used to ride it when I was oh, in elementary school oh. when did Toy Story Mania open up in Anaheim 
I, I feel don't... like around the same time. I remember seeing that one on Disney Channel commercials. Yeah, I don't. 2000, when, yeah, 2008. So it opened up. It, it looks like DCA and Hollywood Studios both opened simultaneously. In so when did Buzz Lightyear in Magic Kingdom open? You know, I always forget the name of that ride because it's Astro Blasters, um, Space, Space Ranger, Ranger Spin. Spin. Yeah, there we go. Um, the opening date of that attraction was 1998. Yep. Oh. See, that's so. Ever since what? I've been going to Magic Kingdom, it was there. That's wow, why, because we rode that ride. That was one of our family's favorite rides. So, I feel, I wish that, I think if I could have, like, one wish from a genie, one of my three wishes would be to go back in time anywhere and remember what things were like, because yeah. my, like, failed, corrupted memory can't ever recall. Yeah. And I don't know what was there in Disneyland before, t- pre-2000, because I was in Disneyland, like, three or four times before 2005. Sure. Yeah. So, I'm not sure what was there before that. I'm sure I know I could find it somewhere online, but that's yep. not... What we're here for yes because so. we are actually talking about the tree of life so i mentioned that the disney's animal kingdom opened in april of 1998 and a bug's life did not come out until later that year mm-hmm. so it was seven months before the film appeared in theaters that the attraction opened now this happened because michael eisner suggested Mm-hmm. Hey, let's use A Bug's Life as promo for the movie. It's coming uh-huh. out in about a year. The park's going to open mm-hmm. in April before the movie comes out. Let's get people excited about it because they already knew that they wanted a show attraction yeah. inside of the yeah, Tree yeah, of Life. Yeah, yeah. Um, so they actually used a ton of Imagineers and mm-hmm. Disney special effects, took care of all the animatronics, the mm-hmm. smells, the wind, the water effects. But they outsourced the visual effects right. to an animation company. Um, Did Pixar called... not do do it? They used Rhythm and Hues Studios, which has since folded. Fascinating. And they did all the visual effects and animation um, that brought in the three D aspects. Oh, because I was going to say, 3D I'm sure. Attraction. I'm sure the D- Pixar actually animated it. Oh, I'm sure. Because like they would have had all the character renderings and everything all ready to go. It was really just the company they used to help help the the visual effects and and the 3D aspect of it. Got it. But Disney itself took care of like all of the um, practical effects. Gotcha. Okay, that makes sense. Yep. So that is. um, I'm not going to go through like the story of it's tough to be a bug because. If you've done it, you know it. If you haven't done it, I don't want to spoil anything because it's like sort of twists and turns of like, should I be jumping out of my seat? Should I like duck and hide? I would say at the end, definitely lean forward and stand up so you don't get like poked by bugs. Yeah. So I did already kind of warn you so. that bugs crawl under your butt and sting you in the back. And last yeah. week I warned you that spiders fall from the ceiling when there was a mm-hmm. literal spider falling from the ceiling above my head where I sit when we record. So. Mm-hmm. Yep, those are fun things. Stink bugs. Uh, it's it's all a the things. fun. It's an okay, good ride, but it's very upsetting. My brother, sorry to throw him under the bus. Go for it. Was completely scared of this attraction for several years. I think it was. I think it was the end. I was the same way. I, I was not a big fan of the ride and uh, or the experience, and it made me very upset when I was a kid. So I I don't think I was ever scared of it. I think I've always liked it, but I just love Animal Kingdom and yeah. the Tree of Life. So right. Yeah, so that is That's most cool, of what I have of it, about the Tree of Life. Um, mm-hmm. The only other thing that's just been sort of like more recent is the Tree of Life Awakenings, Um, just because yep. that really is like you touched on it with Epcot and the lights that they've installed to do sure. the shows there. But that started in 2016 when they started adding in new nighttime hours. Mm-hmm. And that is a projection show on the tree. And they have it's... different projection shows. Um, there's like a Christmas version. There was a whole thing about Bambi and the Lion King and all those things. Um, another really cool thing is when you get to the park in the morning for rope drop, there's a really beautiful ceremony mm-hmm. in front of the Tree of Life um, at rope drop where they release some tropical birds like parrots. Are they all parrots? Maybe a couple of macaws in there or something. Yeah. No, and they all do sure. this like really beautiful flight pattern back and forth. It's very pretty. So. Yes, the tree of life. Well, that's great. I love that. Did you learn anything new? Yeah, I did. Um, I did learn. I, I mean, the Noah's Ark thing was really something yeah. to, to think about. I uh, know. 
Oh boy. So I learned that, but yeah, there's yeah. a lot of interesting things I think yes. um, in that. So, well, thank you for sharing that and doing all your due diligence and research. That was yes. Awesome. It helps me to appreciate my favorite park even more when I learn all of the work that goes behind. Right. right. Like the icon of the park and mm-hmm. like what went into making it and sure. learning more about my favorite Imagineer and how he kind of partnered with all of these of other course. Imagineers and sculptors and all the work that went mm-hmm. behind making this happen for opening day. So. Love that. Well, that's great. Well, all right, guys, that is going to wrap up this installment of Park Icons for us here. Uh, we just want to say thank you so much for listening. Um, if you want to learn more about us or follow along with our info, with our with our updates and everything going on with the show, you can find us at theparksacademypod.com as well as the Parks Academy on Instagram. Um, we have a Patreon page. If you'd like to support the show, you can jump in there. But like we said, kind of at the top, the, the one of the best ways to support us and to kind of show the, you know your your um your 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 what show your what you know show show your um help me out show your like i I already said support like three times show your fondness of the show sure (laughs) show your fondness of the show by like giving us some good reviews and 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 kind ratings on uh, apple Podcasts. that really goes a long way um you know we want to be able to share as much as we possibly can with people who are interested in disney and not just even just about disney news or our thoughts and feelings about what's happening but also a deep dive into you know some of the history and more interesting elements of the parks that maybe aren't discussed as often um, thank you again one more time to our sponsor, Deep Cut. Remember, you can get your uh, first order uh, discounted by 10%, and uh, that's by using the code TPA10 at checkout. Um, they have such great stuff. Of course, you heard the ad and everything, but we, we could not be more grateful to have them as a sponsor and supporter of the show. Um, thanks again so much for listening. Uh, start in Canada. Start in Adventureland. Adventureland.